Magic the Gathering. Okay. Because we've seen stock drops, money lost. We've seen death threats. We've seen chaos. We've seen lawsuits. We've seen corporate power disputes. And all this has happened in the last few days over Magic the Gathering. And I want to catch you up on what the hell's going on. The main story is that there's been a collapse in prices in a certain set of cards. And that's like the, the kicking off event. But I want to give you some, some zoom back a little bit. All right, so when you think of Magic, you probably think of some nerdy guy playing a card game with another nerdy guy, <laughs> okay? I would like to introduce one of the kings of nerdy guys. His name is Sheldon Minery, and he's one of the OG super magic nerds, okay? This guy has been playing magic for decades and decades. He's like a high level judge. He worked at Wizards for a bit. He knows magic in and out decades ago. He invented a new way of playing magic. That's not this 1v1 format. He invented with his friends a new way of playing magic called Commander. Now, I don't have to explain to you all the details, but Commander is a hundred cards and they're all different. It's basically like if you ask a, almost a kid to make up the most fun way to play magic, he's like, hey, what if we just have a hundred cards, they're all different, and you get one card that's like your superhero card, your Commander. So Commander immediately starts to take off. It's actually really fun to play. And instead of two players, it's often four or more. It's like a big, fun multiplayer bonanza where you're playing all these fun cards and Commander videos on YouTube do really well, better than other videos of Magic. Eventually, Wizard starts making actual Commander product, like product made for Commander, like including Commanders, like they lean into it. And eventually, Commander becomes not just a popular way to play Magic, it becomes the default. <laughs> and Sheldon does a lot of things, but one thing he helps create is this idea of rule zero. Rule zero is the, is the overarching dominant rule of commander and rule zero is essentially says hey if you and your friends are cool with it there are no rules <laughs> like you can include whatever card you want you can do any house rules you want you can ban whatever you want it's for fun really just try to make sure you're not being an asshole it's the core idea of commander is like stop trying to put all the most powerful cards in your deck so you can constantly win play the card game for fun understand that humans are very bad at doing this <laughs> We all think that we're playing by rule zero, but we kind of want to win. You want your deck to be not crazy strong, but you want it to be a little stronger than theirs because you want to win. But all of this ran really well for years. And then last year, late 2023, Sheldon Minery died uh, of cancer and Magic mourned him completely because he's a real legend of the game. He's done a lot for the game and he helped really revitalize the game by creating those popular format commander. He died and, and, and Wizards did a really cool thing by printing a card celebrating him. Sheldon, the commander, it's like an official card. He's part of the game permanently. That's awesome. However, now that he was gone, a lot of things that he was like the powerhouse of keeping running were kind of up in limbo because he had established the commander rules committee and the commander advisory group, and he invented the game essentially. So he had helped run it and keep things in line for years. There were five members left of the rules committee, and they were in charge of like basically the rules for this gigantic popular format. And when you think about that, it's a little bit crazy. It's a little bit out there because it's not Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> so they might print the cards, they might make the cards, they might sell the cards, but if you were to decide who can use the cards, who can play the cards, it's this Commander Rules Committee. They decide what gets banned. And in most games, that's not the case. It would be like Riot Games or something, not being able to decide the competition rules for League of Legends. Like it's a unique situation where the fans had a lot of authority and power over this really popular format. Now I wanna give you guys some gifts. I'm gonna give you this beautiful jeweled lotus. This is for you, chat. I'm gonna take you on a trip to this spooky mana crypt. I'm gonna give you this monkey, the dockside extortionist. It's all yours. Unless the rules committee says they're all banned. <laughs> and that's what kicked off all this drama. All four of these extremely popular extremely powerful cards got banned at once. Now, reminder, in the very popular commander format, everyone is trying to cheat rule zero a little bit and get a little bit stronger. <laughs> and all four of these cards were uniquely good in almost every deck. So they're all very strong and they start to show up in almost every deck, especially these two, which means they were very valuable. And so when all four of them got banned, 
It was pandemonium. What's up, everybody? This is Jimmy Kramer coming to you from the MTG Community Center here in the Command Zone, and I am going nuts over here. Okay, let's check in on the community reactions right now on Twitter. It looks like everyone's talking about the band list, but I don't know what they're talking about. There ain't no band in the house because they've all been banned from the band. Okay, what about Facebook? Turns out people still use Facebook. Okay, onwards to Reddit. <laughs> And uh, what do we expect? It's Reddit. They hate it. That's why we're going to close this website and never use it again. Okay. <laughs> it was chaos. And Reddit did indeed hate it because uh, the most hardcore fans of the game had just lost collectively millions in value. This card Mana Crypt that we're talking about that was in almost every person's commander deck went from $180 in value to 50 almost overnight. Some people had dozens or hundreds of copies of this. People started signing mass petitions, demanding that the ban list get undone. People started uh, demanding refunds from shops where they bought the card saying, wait, what the fuck? I bought this card for 180 and now it's worth 50, give my money back. Or worse, some people found out about the ban, immediately went to their local game store who hadn't heard about the ban yet, dumped all of their cards at market value, then the, the shop realized they'd been scammed <laughs> when they found out the ban later and then banned them from the store. People on the internet, as they often do, started demanding lawsuits <laughs> in the YouTube comments. We're gonna do a civil lawsuit on the rules committee. Again, the rules committee is five volunteer magic fans. This guy had a friend get married and he got him a copy of Jeweled Lotus and Happily Ever After for his wedding. Then he had to write a PS. I was planning to gift you these cards before the ban. The rules committee is bullshit. <laughs> Again, this is the rules committee. I don't know if you notice anything different about one member of the rules committee that might make them more vulnerable to an online hate raid. The kid's not part of the rules committee. <laughs> I don't know if any of these people might be more um, likely to be endlessly attacked. Again, by the way, I wanna say, I'm no magic expert, but my understanding, and I've talked to uh, people like Jimmy Wong and people that know magic better than me, all four of these cards, they're all ban worthy. They're all very, very strong and very annoying and they probably should be banned. Anyway, turns out it was her, all right? So she starts getting extra harassed, like on her social medias and Instagram and everything. So then to protect her, they leak that, hey, this wasn't even a unanimous decision. And she was the only one who pushed back against the ban. But then, that caused another wave of problems because everyone's like, wait, it wasn't even fucking unanimous? It wasn't even unanimous? And now my shit's worth what, $50? So now they're extra fucking mad. This happened all around Friday. And on Friday, I was playing Magic with some friends. One of them is Travis Gafford, who helped, who helped introduce me to this story. And I was talking to Travis and I said, listen, this reminds me of when Riot Games was getting annoyed with all of the other companies that ran League of Legends tournaments, like IPL that went out of business and um, ESL and all that. And I said, I got to imagine, well, Wizards of the Coast is having meetings right now saying, why is so much of our business being impacted by five strangers? <laughs> so that's when the yoink happened. <laughs> and that's when this chaotic moment this weekend became a chance for wizards to do what they probably always wanted to do and say, hey, the power to ban cards really shouldn't be with the fans. It should be with us. And they put out this post called On the Future of Commander, where they said, hey, people have been giving death threats to the rules committee. That is not cool. So it also seems that it's just too monumental of a task for them which means we're going to take over. <laughs> I mean, they kind of pulled a Palpatine, you know, emergency powers. And now after years and years and years and years of Sheldon's system, where the fans help decide how to run this fan-made format, Wizards now has complete top-to-bottom control. Again, this is the Commander Rules Committee saying, as a result of the threats last week, it has become impossible for us to continue operating. Given that, we have asked Wizards of the Coast to assume responsibility for Commander, and they'll make all the decisions and announcements going forward. It's now complete coup. They have total control. Wizards has emerged from this as the king and victor. Their most popular format is now completely in their hands, and what that means is still up in the air. Olivia, the woman who was, uh, again, attacked by the internet and then championed by the internet for being against it, said, I'm devastated, I didn't want this. 
I'll write something more meaningful and thought out soon. But right now, I'm just so sad and empty, hoping I didn't fail the memory of my friend. They are pretty upset because, again, this has run for years and years and years. And then one year after Sheldon is gone, the structure of the rules committee has been destroyed. All because people were so mad that their mana crypts are worth less in value. These were pretty funny on, on Magic the Gathering Reddit. Accept bans in stride and don't threaten people for trying to create a more healthy format or draw 25 Magic players. <laughs> At the day later, everyone started to realize, wait, what the fuck have we just done? <laughs> all of the angry Magic fans started realizing, like, what the fuck have we just done? A thing that we all loved is, is probably in a dangerous spot very quickly. One of the first things Wizards announced, and almost incredibly fast, as if they've been planning this, like they were ready for this moment, they announced that they're like planning a power bracket as a way of determining how to balance commander. There'll be different power levels where different cards are legal. Because let me understand the financial incentives here. Wizards does not want any cards to be banned, almost any cards to be banned. Because if they are legal, at least in some formats, like the, like the high power format, some whale will buy them. And that means they can always reprint them with special art. <laughs> and sell a fucking mint. And so it's very likely based on their vague, ambiguous announcement that they're going to unban these cards, but make them only allowed in power four decks. But again, all of this makes what was a very simple format, a rule zero type format, a lot more complicated. It's a bit spooky for Commander Magic fans. What is funny though, is that people are already sussing this out and the price of these banned cards. Cards people were tearing up, destroying, burning on fire, throwing away, is spiking right back up. <laughs> Cause everyone expects them to get unbanned. The, the dip is being bought because everyone's like, wait, it might get unbanned. It was a whirlwind four or five days where a system that balanced fans and company for many years has been undone in a moment, largely due an outpouring of fan rage at what seems like a pretty reasonable ban. Yeah, all this over four cards. Yeah, it is all this over four cards. <laughs>